icebreaker. Come on in, the water's fine, you say. Well, easy for you to say, you're not up here on the thin ice. <laughs> the life and times of Gordon Smith. Who better to tell you about Gordon Smith than myself, Gordon Smith? Where are you from? Where you been? What do you do? Where are you going? These are questions we all often hear at a social function, like a cocktail party. I'm going to answer all those questions and more, much more. And I'm going to close by talking and reflecting upon my life and maybe give you some food for thought about your own life as well. When someone asks me where I'm from, my reply is, I'm from wherever I'm living. I don't care about where I've been or where I used to live. I'm from Coral Springs. I've lived here since 1985. 50,000 people in Coral Springs at that time. We've more than tripled in this city. I've seen a lot of change. If you were to ask me where I'm from, or my roots, I would say I'm from the Midwest. I was born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio. Went to school at Columbus, Ohio, which is the Ohio State University. That's important in saying the year of 1967 when I graduated because you need to know what was going on in the country at that time because it affected my life. 1967, there was a war going on in the country called Vietnam. Every 18-year-old had a military obligation. We got a draft card we had to carry and we were proud of it. Knowing that I had a military obligation after I left college, we had a college deferment at that time. So I knew that I had a military obligation, and so going through four years of college, I went through four years of ROTC, Air Force. So that when I graduated, I was not in a cap and gown. I was in an Air Force uniform and was sworn in as a second lieutenant to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States and follow the orders of the officer appointed above me. Within 30 to 60 days of being sworn in of graduation, I was sent or received orders to Carswell Air Force Base, which is in Fort Worth, Texas. I spent three to four years in Fort Worth, enjoyed several years as a single officer in the military, and then met the lady. <laughs> I had decided at that time to make the Air Force a career and had volunteered for Southeast Asia and had already received orders to go to South Korea. I knew that I had reached that proverbial fork in the road. A yogiism would be, when you get to the fork in the road, take it. And so I knew I had to make a decision regarding the lady that I had been dating. And so we decided to get engaged. We didn't have time to get married. So I got engaged, went to Korea for six months, came back at what's called a mid-tour or a 30-day uh, vacation in between. Came back, got married, went on a honeymoon, and then said goodbye, went back to Korea for another six months, and then after 12 months in Korea, came home. And that's when we began our married life together. We traveled, she met me in California, we drove all the way across to um, Langley Air Force Base, which is in Hampton, Newport News, Virginia, right on the Chesapeake Bay. I spent about three to four years there at the headquarters and made it again as a career in the Air Force. Upon retirement from the Air Force, I transitioned into um, distribution, which would be the equivalent of what I did in the Air Force, and then eventually transitioned into sales, medical sales and equipment to hospitals and doctor's offices throughout South Florida. And I did that for about 17 years. Grew tired of that in time and decided to enter into another career field. Went back to school, went, got a master's degree at 50-something, you're never too old to learn. Got a master's degree in education, majored in social studies, and became a teacher at Coral Springs Charter School, where I had been for seven years and was the social studies department chair as well. Two years, the last two years, I took a sabbatical and became the practice administrator full-time for my wife, who is a family practice physician in Coral Springs. And that's what I've been doing the last two years. Involved with that, um, I'm also a franchise owner in a business that addresses the number one issue in the country health-wise, and that is obesity or overweight. It's a product that helps you to naturally burn fat rather than store fat and to lower cholesterol. So that is a part of uh, a side business that I do along with my wife. Um, last um, month I was reading a magazine uh, called Success. And if you have not read that magazine, it's one of the most um, interesting and thought-provoking magazines um, that I've read. And in this magazine, it asked me to challenge me to, and I will ask you to do the same for yourselves, 
How would you describe your life in one sentence? What was important? Kind of like a mission statement, but one sentence. What would you say about yourself? And I thought about that for a long time because I would ramble and think all of these superlative words and so forth. And I came down to, I was a good father, I was a good husband, made a few friends, I was a good teacher, and I treated people fairly. I would ask each of you to try to remember and think, what does your life mean and what would you like people to say about you? Define it in one sentence. I think too often we wait until we have one foot in the grave before we look back at life and say, what was important in life? I think we have an idyllic vision of life as kind of a train ride where we're a passenger looking out the window and we gaze at the beautiful golf course, the windows or the, the streams and the mountains and the valleys, but we're always constantly focused on the station, the final destination. The flags will be waving, the band will be playing, and oh, we'll be so happy then. I think we've all practiced or we remember when we were 16, oh, how happy we'll be when we're 16 and we get that license and we get that GTO to drive around. Everybody will be looking at us. Oh, when we graduate from high school, we'll be happy then. Oh, no, when we get from college, that's when life will really begin. And then it's when we get married, then when we have our kids, we'll be happy. When we get that job that we're looking for, we'll really be happy then. Then when we get the promotion, we'll be happy. When the kids get married and leave, then we'll be happy. That'll be a time. And then finally, oh, when we retire, we get that RV and travel around the country. We'll be so happy then. That will be a time to celebrate and enjoy life. And then as we have one foot in the grave and we look back at our lives and we say, damn, I forgot to enjoy life. Fellow Toastmasters, remember the joy of life is the journey itself. It is the journey itself. It is the precious moment. It is today. It is this moment. Relish it, for the station comes all too soon. Fellow Toastmasters.